multiple factors which are actually attracting large tech companies to India. So let's take a, a more of a top to, top, down, top to bottom view. First of all, uh, Indian companies have always proven that they are best in the trade in terms of servicing software uh, industry globally. Uh, the top nine uh, tech companies in India literally serve uh, almost every one of the Fortune 500 clients globally, so, which includes TCS, Infosys, Wipro, and the likes of the bigger companies, uh, which proven that there is enough local talent which actually helps to build large-scale companies, which is, which is one of the main reasons why uh, global companies like Microsoft, like IBM, like Accenture, mm. Uh, and as latest as Apple today and Google uh, only, uh, only about uh, seven, eight years ago, all of them are continuously made large sets of investments in India. So it's a, a very supportive, great talent available locally and a significantly, uh, uh, I would say, cheaper wages compared to the uh, rest of the world in terms of providing such uh, a world-class software solution uh, available locally, which makes... India is a very uh, good destination for large companies to invest in India and uh, yeah. look for great talent out of India. Yeah, Ram, you talk about the cheaper wages. I was just in Vietnam, which is also a place with very low wages, and they have, they're building a very strong IT backbone there with their own software engineering talent. I mean, does Vietnam pose a significant challenge in terms of the tech sector to India, or would you say they're still several years behind? Uh, look, I think uh, most of the countries in Southeast Asia and uh, uh, South Asia as well, uh, they are making significant strides to compete for the same level of software, software market share that India already has. But one thing we need to understand is uh, the global software solutions, uh, software services sector is uh, uh, about 50%, 55% of the global market share is currently is with Indian IT companies. So mm. it's, it's fair to say that uh, every other country and every other company has to make a significant effort to actually compete with the uh, highly entrenched uh, software services uh, sector that India has globally today. As I said before, uh, over the last 20 years, these companies have made significant inroads in providing world-class service uh, with a classic onshore-offshore combination, and which is a, a significant edge to India over the others in the years to come. Uh, Ram, just quickly, we only have a few more seconds left, but there's, everyone's beating a path to India in terms of investors. You've got private equity, venture capitalists. Uh, what are the pitfalls if all the low-hanging fruit has been taken in, and there's so many startups um, popping up every day in India? Where are the pitfalls for investors? Look, there are about 4,200 startups today with $5 billion of money already gone in. But one thing you've got to understand is uh, there is still significant... Uh, uh, room for infrastructure to grow, which is where Indian government is still making efforts. Uh, valuations of some of these Indian startups are still quite high, which is where some of these incubators, accelerators, groups like T-Hub in Hyderabad will play a significant role to mentor these startups to actually uh, support their uh, crazy valuation that they continuously get. There's a lot of mentoring that needs to be still provided to the startups to actually justify these valuations so that investors who are actually investing globally into India uh, actually find comfort mm. uh, in supporting such high valuations. For example, if you look at it today, eight out of the 10 VC and PE investments that are made in into India are coming from global players. So there is a yes. bit of a uh, risk, but there is still a lot of uh, market to be proven. So Indian yeah. market is just opening up, Indian investments, uh, Indian sure. ecosystem for uh, startups is developing now.